us some tips on how do we get people to approach us? Because I'm telling you, this is the issue with everybody in network marketing, any business. We just don't have anybody to talk to. All my guys are trained. They all know what to say. They know every overcoming objection, known to man. They just don't have anybody to talk to us. Please help us, John. You know, it's fascinating, right? They don't have anyone to talk to. And I, I love that because I'll be like, oh, cool. Well, how many Facebook friends do you have? Like a thousand. I'm like, a thousand. Man, back in my day, it was like, make a list of a hundred. So you got a thousand. So how many of those people have you talked to in the last, let's say, six months? I'd say 90 days, but let's, let's expand it out to six months. How many of those people you talked to in the last six months about your products or opportunity? And typically people respond with 5%, 10%, 2%. I'm like, well, so what's wrong with the other 90%? You know, and, and it's funny because obviously what they mean is I don't have anybody coming to me asking me for information. Nobody's raising their hand, which is why you want to learn marketing and learn how to create content, be a content creator. You can learn to educate. You can learn to uh, inspire. You can learn how to enter train. I like entertainment. I like to have fun and teach people a little something, something. Uh, but, you know, when you start showing up with your personality, your style, you know, you're telling stories, you're impacting people. Again, I would rather teach than pitch than sell. I like to, you know, show people a better way to do something. But at the end of the day, um, it's also connecting with people and being okay with proactively reaching out to people. Like if I'm friends with you on Facebook, I should be allowed to message you. I should be allowed to talk to you. And if someone is weird about that, or someone has a problem with me reaching out, and, and I'm not always reaching out to pitch my business. In fact, most of the time I'm not. I'm reaching out to connect create a conversation, maybe create some curiosity around my product or opportunity, see if they're open, depending on where the conversation goes. But every time I have a conversation, that's a seed planted. That's a relationship where I'm like depositing into my social equity with that person. And then as I create curiosity, as I tell stories, as I do my videos, I post in my Insta story, my Facebook story, I record a reel or a TikTok that's watering those seeds. And at some point, they're going to be like, wait a second, what's that product? Wait a second, what's that business? Or they're in a business, because now we've created all these other income streams. They're in a business, they're happy with it, but they want to learn the social media side. They want to learn how to market and prospect the right way without being annoying, without turning off their friends and family and showing up with a value that can be a value add to people. And, and that's, that's a whole other conversation people get caught up in. They're like, what's my brand? How do I provide value? I think, honestly, it's too hard to determine without just doing the work and showing up consistently. I'm sure that's how you figured it out. Like when I first was trying to figure out my brand, honestly, I was so in my head about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start doing videos. I'm going to start posting things, sharing ideas, sharing tips, sharing advice, sharing things I'm learning, sharing things I'm passionate about. We'll see what happens. And luckily, I didn't get in my own way too much. And I just kept doing it and getting better at it. And I will say this, one strong advantage for me early on is that because I had some experience in network marketing and I could kind of talk and share tips on network marketing, I would actually have people that were in other teams sharing my stuff and thanking me for the value I was providing. So that was, a, that was an advantage for sure in those early days to help me build up my confidence. I mean... I think that's phenomenal, man. I mean, it, it's so important that you get this thing right from the beginning. You get the mindset right. You get the focus right. You get the mentorship right. You get the coaching right. How important is it for people early on to be coachable? It's everything. Now, most people aren't, right? I remember I heard one time this, this leader said, he goes, uh, you know, you're frustrated with people on your team because it was all leaders in the room. He's like, you're frustrated with these people on your team that are, that are uncoachable. He goes, really, they're just uncontrollable. And he goes, the truth is, those are some of the best people. He's like, most of you were unco un uncontrollable, uncoachable in the beginning. And I was like, yeah, I definitely was. And sometimes you need people to fail. You need them because we learn more from our mistakes, right? We learn more from failure. So I failed my way to the top. And even though I was uncoachable in the beginning, the good news is when I was making the mistakes and doing all the wrong things, I was always willing to come to my upline and ask questions and ask how I could do things better. And I remember uh, in those early years, she would say, because um, I had an upline, a, a female upline, and she was just, man, she would just say it like it was. And she'd say, 
uh, excuses or results. Are you bringing me an excuse or are you getting a result? Because you can't make money and make excuses. Choose wisely. And she just always got into our head about staying positive and being consistent and, you know, outworking negativity and all these things that very early on I'd never heard before that still 20 years later, I still remember a lot of what she shared, a lot of what I learned from her and of course other leaders in the company as well. But she was like my, my sponsor's upline. So him and him and I would learn from her in those early days. And it was just so impactful, but I was uncon uncontrollable, uncoachable, like did my own thing. You know, we try all these different, different ideas and some worked, some didn't. But I learned from my mistakes and I would always come back to whether it was in that company or years later, even still today. If I have a question, if I have an issue, like I'm never too big or too successful. I mean, we literally make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and I still look for coaching. I still invest in courses and invest in myself and go to seminars and try to get better. And anytime, anytime that I feel my ego flare up, I'm like, no, no, no. Mm -mm. you're not the best. You're not the end all be all. Yes, you're very good at what you do. But there's a lot of very talented people out there. And maybe you could use some help on the on this one thing. Or, you know, maybe you could have someone else come in and assist you with this situation with this team with this person with this, you know, scenario. And I think one of the best things you can do, whether it's, you know, draw a line in the sand moving forward today, or, you know, relaunching your business, your ego ain't your amigo. Like the sooner you can just succumb and say, you know what, I'm going to be coachable. I'm going to give things a try. I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to be willing to fail and do the things my mentor, my company, the system is teaching me to do and just, you know, have blind faith that things will work out. I think that was like the thing for me, man. It was just like, I was so fearful of failure and I just, wanted to do things that I was more comfortable doing. This was a big reason I had fear of public speaking. I didn't want to go up there and mess up. But the truth is, the only way to get good at that is by doing it, right? Just taking action. What's ignorance on fire? Yep. Oh, oh what is it? Yeah, what is ignorance on fire? I ignorance, is, ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice, right? And I think that the thing is, when people are brand new, they go out there and they talk to everybody. They're saying all the crazy things they shouldn't be saying, but I would prefer somebody that is, again, making the mistakes, talking to a bunch of people, saying stuff that's not even true. You're like, dude, that, that literally, you just literally lied. Like that was way off. But it's, it's funny because that person is so excited that they're signing people up. They're getting customers. They're getting results. Meanwhile, you got someone else over here that's like analysis paralysis. They got to understand all the levels and the ranks and the ingredients and all the stuff. And it's like, bro, you're literally in your own way. And right now, your story sucks because you took 30 days to do your first post. You took 30 days to prospect anybody. And now everyone's going to do what you're doing. So the sooner you get into action and you fumble and bumble your way through the, the, the system and figure things out as you go, earning while you're learning. Eventually, you'll get to that point where you know, you're not ignorant anymore, but you also have the results, even though you did it all wrong. Oh, man, that's just I, I, everything you're saying just reminds me of the early days in the business yeah. for me and, and the things that I've been teaching all these years. Like, look, people are watching you. They're watching your behaviors and right. they will do what you do. I mean, yeah. leading from the front, John, I mean, were you that guy? that always led from the front? In the early days, I did a lot of recruiting. Um, I wasn't the best like leader. I wasn't always like sitting up front, taking notes. I was never willing to go in front of the room. I hated the idea of speaking in front of people, all these things. But uh, nowadays, I mean, I out recruit my whole team. Now I'm never, it's very rare that I'm number one for the month out of like 18,000 people, right? But like over the course of the last six years, every year on my team, I'm in the top three. So I'm always one of the top, top recruiters on my own team leading by example. And there's always a couple of people that beat me every year, right? Because there's someone that comes in and enrolls a ton of people right out of the gate. But over the test of time, and I'll, I'll mess with them. I'll be like, dude, remember when you were like crushing me when you first got started? Like I was six last month and you were 12. Like I'll mess with some of my top recruiters, but uh, I think it's hugely important to lead by example. Like do the things you wish your team were doing. So if you wish your team would sell and 
and do more one-on-ones or do more calls or do more uh, recruiting, what, like do the things you wish your team was doing. Like if you wish your team did a better job of recognition, you do a better job of recognition. So whatever you lack, you attack. And you say, you know what, this is something I'm going to focus on this month because our team isn't doing a great job of this, that, or the other thing. So let me go out there and show them how it's done versus just telling them what to do. Thank you for watching our short clips on Alonzo Academy. If you'd like to watch the next short clip, click here. If you'd like to watch the entire podcast, click here.